I kind of want to continue what we talked about on Sunday. Uh, actually, just one verse kind of stuck out in after I got through preaching. It kind of stuck out. And, and it's Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. Isaiah chapter Isaiah 50, verse 4. And the scripture says, The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in a season to him that is weary. He waketh morning by morning, he waketh my ear to hear as the learned. That's the reason why it is so important to us to learn God's scriptures. We need to hide the word in our hearts so we will not sin against God. But also, we need to put the word in us, which is the living word, because the word was in the beginning, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And when Christ lives in us, the living word is actually in us when we believe and confess him as our Lord and Savior. So what we're seeing here is think that the Lord has given us the word and the tongue of the of the learned. Amen. And see, we have to understand that we just don't learn scriptures just to be learning scriptures. We learn scriptures that we are able to know them that we are able to help the people that are grown weary. And so we have to understand there is a lot of weariness going on. There's a lot of people that are tired. A lot of people are disgusted. A lot of people just have no hope. And so, and I'm even talking about Christians. They get down. They let the media and all these things just bombard them. Things, ah. negative things are constantly bombarding us. Mm. And after a while, we get kind of tired, mm. just tired of hearing it. But see, ah. he has given us as the body of Christ, the word in us that we are able to share that word with other people. So we understand this, that it said that we are able to speak a word in a due season. Now, a lot of people, we have too many people that go around, they're always speaking the word, and they're speaking out of turn. They're always telling, it just using a 10-pound Bible, hitting people over the head. And the people are not even ready to receive it. That's the reason why I wake up in the morning and I say, Lord, make all my appointments divine appointments. That, that it is that when I go out, that you prepare people's heart yes. to hear the word of God. Lord. That you prepare me that I can go out and speak the word in dear season. Mm. You know, a lot of times, if you just go around just to tell people God loves you, that's all they need. Even to say, I love you. That's all they need to speak the word in due season. But we have to understand what the Lord wants us to do is have the gift of exhortation. The gift of exhortation. Which we look at the word expectation. It comes from a Greek word that is parakaleo. Parakaleo. You know, I, I think I pronounced it, but it sounds all Greek to me anyway. But anyway... <laughs> But when we look at the word para, it means to come close to or come beside. And kaleo means to call. So what we're doing is that when we exhort other people that are growing weary and exhort other people to come to Christ, we are calling them up close and personal. That we're calling them that something that really means something to them. It's up close and it's very personal. Boy. Now, when we look at the scriptures, that we are called to exhort each other. 
We are here to lift each other up that even when we are down, that when somebody else is weary, that is our calling to lift them up. That does not mean to go and chastise them and just totally get it's show them kindness and mercy. When we learn to show kindness and mercy, then people will listen to us. Too many people think, well, I got to do fire and brimstone. Well, you know what? It's not your duty to do fire and brimstone. It's the Holy Spirit to do the conviction. And so we have to understand that, that we are called to exhortation. As body of Christ, we are called to lift up the weary. We are called to share Jesus Christ, to come up, up close and personal with them. Now, I want us to look at a scripture. It's Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Some people will say it's Malachi, but it's actually Malachi. It is the last book in the Old Testament. The last book in the Old Testament. In the King James. In the King James. Now, in our Hebrew Bible, it's way in the middle. So we have to see that. But we see in Malachi 3.16, it says... Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another. So that is a key right there to us. Yeah. Is that we as a body of Christ that believe and fear the Lord Christ need God. to need each other to lift each other up. Yeah. That we are called to lift each other up. Too many times at church people will come to church and well I've got my hour in, I've got my duty in, I've put my offering in, I put my two dollars in, and that was my missions to the, the to the entertainment and would go home. But we have to understand that we see that God wants each one as the body of Christ to lift each other up. Yes. And so he says, then they that fear the Lord spake to one another. You have too many people that don't even know each other. They go to church. I've talked to certain people that I thought these people were big in that church. And I asked somebody in that church, do you know so-and-so? And they said, who? That's one thing here you get up close and personal. <laughs> and we're going to keep getting up close and personal. Because we are going to be known as exhorters. That we're going to be people that lift up each other. Amen. We are going to help each other that give the word in due season to the people when we grow weary. So we need to understand that is a calling. That is actually a gift of God for us to be able to show other people. So we see going on with the rest of that verse. And the Lord hearkened and he heard it. And the book of remembrance was written before him that feared the Lord that thought upon his name. So what does that say? Is that when we think upon God's name, it goes in the book of remembrance. And it goes in there and God remembers that we remember his name. That we know his name is the most powerful name under heaven. There is no other name but Jesus. And it's very powerful. So we have to understand that it's written and he, God will remember those that fear him, that reverence him. The people that stand in awe of him. So we look at verse 17. And what did he say? Those that fear him. This is a promise. This is a promise that you take the bank, but you actually take it to heaven. That it says that they shall be mine. When you fear the Lord and you think on him, he says he is, you are his. We all like to belong to something. We all like to be loved. But being loved by the supreme being is more than any other person can love you. So we understand this. That the fear of the Lord and thought upon his name, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. In that day, I'll make up my jewels. 
Mm -mm -mm. That we are. You ever thought of this? How I many? I've heard the thing. Diamonds are girl's best friend. You ever heard that? Oh yeah. Diamonds are good. Well, we are God's best friends because He calls us His jewels. Glory. He calls us His jewels. We are His jewels. We are precious in His sight. And we have to understand that. We are precious in His sight. And it says, what do they say? I will spare them. He says, no matter what we go through, no matter what the world looks like, no matter what anybody is saying to us, no matter how everything falls apart, you know, even the government falls apart, everything says, what did it say? He said, I will spare them. And why do they say spare them? Because we fear him and we awe him and we call out his name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I will spare him as mere as a man spares his own son that serveth him. He will treat us just like his son, Jesus. That we are adopted. We are, oh man, we are adopted in the kingdom of God. Oh man, we are adopted. He will treat us just like we are his son. Like Jesus is our big brother. Not only our salvation, but he is our big brother. And He, God will treat us just like he does Jesus. Oh, thank you. Then verse 18. Mm. I don't know if you're having fun tonight. tonight. I, am. I am. I tell you what. Malachi 3.18. It says, Then shall you return and discern between righteousness and the wicked, and between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. What he is saying is, is that Jesus is coming back again. Jesus is coming back again. And he is coming for the people that serve him. The people that are his, his jewels. They are coming. Mm -mm -mm. Now we're talking about the exhortation. That that is what we're called to exhort each other. Well, Luke 21, 15. Luke 21, 15. He says... This is what he's saying to you. That's what he's saying to you. That's what he's saying to you. And especially he's saying it to me. You know, he's no respecter of persons. If he says it to me, he says to you too. So you might as well get used to it. So we see here, Luke 21, 15. He says, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom. I will give you a mouth and wisdom. Wow. Wow. He said that we're going to exhort people. And we're going to exhort people in due time. Now he will give us the mouth and he'll tell us what to say, when to say it, and he'll give us the wisdom. Yes, sir. You know, one thing, you can have knowledge. And you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't have wisdom to use it, it's not worth anything. Too many people have knowledge and they just spit it out. Spit it out. And you know what? They just spit it out and they're not even, no rhyme or reason. But when the Holy Spirit comes and he gives you wisdom how to use the word, how to use what God has put in your heart, it makes a difference. It says, back to 2115, it says, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries, catch that, yeah. all your adversaries, all your enemies, all the people that are against you, all the wicked people. You know, we see right now what's going on. It seems like people saying, oh, I'm godly, I go to church, but they sure they sure act like the devil. Yeah, I mean, you know, we see that too much. And we see, but what? this is a promise. He gives you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. Wow. That when we speak the wisdom of God, they can't argue with you. Wow. They will not be able to do Glory. it. Because when you speak Glory. the wisdom of God, the truth goes out. Yep. We goes out. Thank now, you. I said that we're going to have the gift of exhortation. And I'm saying we have an urgency. 
We have an urgency right now. Time is going short. Even if it, he doesn't come back in 200 years, the time is short for somebody. Yes. Every day somebody yes. is getting raptured. Yes. Every day somebody is dying. Yeah. And yes. if we're really, there's an urgency that we yes. ask the Lord to give us truth. Yes. It's, it's our urgency that the Lord will give us the words in this due season. Yes. We got to be insistent of learning God's word. We got to be insistent to be led by the Holy Spirit. We need to be insistent of God, I will take up my cross and I will follow you daily. We need to understand this, that this is what he has for us. We got to be persistent that we're not just going, well, it's just if I feel like it today, I'm going to, you know, no, you're going to say, Lord, you direct my path. Lord, I give you my mouth. I give you my mouth. So we need to have a determination in us that no matter what goes, no matter what fails, no matter how much persecution that we will get, that we will be determined that we're going to follow the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the principles of God, no matter what. No matter what. Even in prosperity and in lack. We're going to say, I am still determined to follow God. I am still determined to do it. We need this tenacity about us that no matter what, I'm going to serve you, Lord, with all my heart, all of my soul, and all of my strength. I'm going to serve you no matter what. No matter what the devil tries to throw at me. I'm going to serve you because greater is he that is in me than is in the world. And so we have to understand that he has given us this ability of exhortation and we will go and we will share with other people. And the urgency is that we have people in our life, even strangers in our life that we come across. That's the urgency that they need Jesus now. And with a time that we're going through now, that we have to understand we need Jesus more than we ever had before. Now, we say that we talk about people are telling me, well, this is the end of America, this is the America. Well, you know, we went through wars, we went through the Depression, which, praise God, I wasn't young enough to go through that. But my parents and y'all's parents went through the Depression. They made it. They made it. They made it because if you look at one variable, is that they all trusted God. They trusted God. And that's the way we need to get to the point that we will be determined that we are going to trust God. And we're going to be determined that he's given us the ability of exhortation that when people are down and out, the people that are weary, that he is going to give us that mouth of the learn to lift up other people. Because we are all called. We all called to the ministry of reconciliation to bring people back to Jesus. You know, this is the thing that we have to understand, that the Lord is calling us, and it's time that we quit playing church. It's, and church is not the building. Church is us inside of us. And we are all the church. And we are all got the ministry of reconciliation. We all have that gift of exhortation of that lifting up God and calling people up close and personal. We're all calling them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We're all called that even the Christians that are down, that we're there to lift them up. That we will no longer just say, oh, you're going to be better. You're just going to be better. No, we're going to lift them up. We're going to lift them up in the name of Jesus. And we should pray every day, Lord, give me that gift of exhortation that I will lift up your name everywhere I go. But do it in due season and with wisdom. Yes. In wisdom. Yes. One thing we have to understand that we cannot, you don't argue scripture. That we don't argue scripture. We, they're going to be all right. 
everything's going to be, we don't argue scriptures. We don't get in vain controversies. Yeah. We just lift up Jesus Christ, yeah. our Lord and Savior. Yeah. Lift him up. And if we do that, all things fall into place. Yeah. Yeah. Lift him up. That Lord, you'll get me through this. Boy, you know, there's been many things in my life. If I didn't rely on the Lord, I'd be way back somewhere else. Might be not even, maybe not even. Nah, not might not even be here. Nah, Some of you say, well, that's good. I don't, don't want you here anyway. No, I'm <laughs> teasing, I, I teasing you. But anyway, we say right now in the name of Jesus yes. that I pray right now that every one of us yes. have that gift of exhortation. Oh, amen. That we become up close and personal with the Lord and Savior in ourselves. And we're up close and personal with other people that are weary yes. and yes. to lift each other up. Yes. It's the duty of each one of us. Yes. Look around the world room and say, I got your back. I got your back. And that's what we need. We got your back. Father, let us pray. Father God, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, first of all, for your Son, which is the Word. And, Father, that you have given us the ability and you have given us the mouth of the learned. That you have put scriptures in us. You put, actually, you put the living Word in us that you put Jesus, because Jesus is the Word. Yes. And so, Father, that you will put this Word in us that we can speak it in due season. That when people are weary, that we'll just lift them up and that you'll give us the word to say at the proper time because you give us wisdom. Mm -hmm. And Father, we thank you that you called us your jewels. Mm -hmm. Father, that you have put us in your family, Father. Yes. Father, that we can look at and you're coming back for us because you look at us as precious sons and daughters. Father, we thank you for this. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Amen.